Welcome to my video. We're going to be looking at an Arduino battery charger, but it's a more modern 2024 update. And this will be using an Arduino as a central controller. It will be using pulse width modulation to control a constant current source. And it will use a couple of TL431s as comparator circuits to monitor the charge voltage. I'm also going to include the Arduino programming code. I will discuss briefly in the video the circuit for uh, detecting charge current and load current, but that will not be included in the Arduino code. Also, the I didn't mention it later in the video, but I will here. This control on the constant current source sets your maximum current output. All right, welcome back. We're going to be looking at an Arduino based battery charger. I've done this in the past, but I've added some recent, recent enhancement to the circuits. Uh, so let's get started. You can see the prototype unit in front of you. Arduino, uh, typical pot, optocouplers between the constant current source and the Arduino for electrical isolation. Uh, but we're going to add something new here. We've discussed um, TL431 voltage comparators at great length. Here I've made a couple of modules using that idea to uh, detect the battery charge voltages and make a decision what to do with Arduino. So let's look at some more hardware. Here's a more blown out look of it. This is before I built these actually into modules. They're right here. This is a LM358. This, is, this monitors the current in the charge circuit and can monitor the current also when um, powering up a load. Here is my constant current source. Here is the large PNP transistor and so forth. Here is the battery test battery under charge. It's at 13 volts. Notice the orange wire connected to the positive terminal is the orange wire that goes back to the TL431 comparator circuit that tells us when the battery is charged. Here is one circuit. This is the LM358 current monitoring circuit. You can use you can read voltage out with an analog to digital converter on Arduino or similar microcontroller. That tells you, one, what is my charge current for the battery, but it also tells you when you're actually putting this on a load, what my load current is. And so even if I had this at drawing, let's say I had a load of 10 amps, this would be putting out 2.5 volts, 0 to 2.5 at 0 to 10 amps. Your, what is called your maximum current is set by this 200 ohm pot in the LM317 circuit. We've discussed that at length. That controls the emitter base current through the MJ2955. The optocoupler serves to switch the LM317 circuit to ground. This can be used to turn off both on and off. And it can also be used for pulse width modulation. Here is another similar circuit. We've discussed the bipolar transistors in parallel. That's available elsewhere. But this is a little different. We're using a TL431 as opposed to an LM317 in what is called the sync mode connection. So, assuming I wanted 10 amps out of these three parallel transistors, and this happened to be the components I was using, I measured the gain and other factors in these transistors. 
I needed 133 milliamps. That's fine. Um, 2.5 divided by 133 milliamps divided into 2.5 volts is going to be approximately 18.5 ohms. The closest you're going to get is a 19 ohm resistor. Or you can just use a 200 ohm pot and precision adjust it to wherever you want. Remember with these here in the battery charger current source, as well as here, you need to use a blocking diode, else the battery will discharge back through the transistors. Here's our 12 volt battery, and here again is our 0.25 ohm sense resistor. In the case of charging this at 10 amps, you should read, oh, 2.5 volts. The formula is something like I times R. Here is an overall block diagram of your Arduino connections. This is a generic symbol I created in DesignWorks Lite. It is an optocoupler controlled constant current source. It could represent this here, or it could represent this here, whichever one you want to use. Down here, you notice these two strange looking modules. These are my TL431 um, comparator voltage detector circuits. When your voltage in BN exceeds what the internal setting is, we get a high out, which is monitored on Arduino digital pin 4 and digital pin 5. This is what the circuit actually looks like. That's the circuit here that is in each of these modules there is this circuit. Another variation of course. Notice that this connects to plus 5. You can get power from the Arduino. If for some reason you need to connect the comparator circuit to a different higher voltage, you could always use an optocoupler and connect the emitter collector appropriately depending on how you connect it. Just be aware that if you, for instance, were to ground the emitter and, you, and connect the collector to the Arduino pin input with a pull-up resistor, that it will go low when the battery voltage on VN exceeds V set. as opposed to this when the VN exceeds the V set voltage that you adjust you'll have 5 volts out. Now let's discuss the next issue and that is the Arduino program itself. Alright let's walk through this Arduino programming. This is similar to an in fact, it's just a collection of if statements and condition checks. But here's what we're defining, okay? TL431A, that's those little comparator modules I told you about. That is defined as digital pin 4. TL431B is defined as digital pin 5. And pulse width mod PWM out, my output pulse width modulation, is pin 6, digital pin 6. What wasn't in the schematic that I added here were a couple of LEDs. So I have a red LED connected to digital pin 11, a yellow LED to digital pin 10, and a green LED connected to digital pin 9. You should know how to connect an LED to an Arduino. You connect it through a 1K resistor to ground. Now I'm going to go ahead and define four values. CCS high or cop, uh, constant current source high current 
is derived is defined as 255. That means the pulse width modulation is at 100% or fully on. CCS medium or med is defined at 144. That's a 50% duty cycle. CCS low is defined as 45. That's 25% duty cycle. These numbers were derived from live measurements. They were not just say, okay, 255 divided by 2 is not 144. And 255 divided by uh, 4 is not 45. These were derived from measurements, from current measurements, and so forth. You can, you can play with that all you want to. Finally, I had to define an integer I call temp that I set to zero. All right, like I said, down here with these four CCS definitions, once again, this was done by observing a current on an amp meter, and then I would be able to read the actual number being input into the uh, constant current source. Let's move on down. Here is your typical pin mode declarations. There's only really um, six of them. They're all they're all defined as uh, outputs. Well, there's two inputs for the TL431A and B. They're both inputs. Uh, for the TL431A, that was adjusted for approximately 12.6 volts. That is, it would put out a high at 12.5, 12.6 or higher. The TL431B, which it was on uh, yeah, digital pin 5, was set for 13.6 volts and so forth. Here's the definition for my LEDs. They're all outputs. I went ahead and defined PWM at pin as output. The fact that you're using a um, pulse width modulation out pretty well takes care of that, but I declared it anyway. If anyone had seen my uh, motor control circuit in an earlier video, these Arduino statements should have looked very similar. Instead of having two input switches, my switches are the uh, TL431 comparator circuits. Now let's look what we have here. The battery voltage is less than 12.6 volts. When there's um, the output on TL431A is zero. That means it's low. TL431B is also low. So you have to make a decision here what you want. All right. This is a this indicates the battery really is just badly discharged, and you want it at a high current rate, or maybe at least a medium. So when both outputs from the comparator circuits are zero, I'm going to digital write LED high. I'm going to turn on the high charge rate LED, to make sure the yellow and green LEDs are off. I'm going to delay a half a second again. Then I'm going to um, load the uh, integer variable temp with CCS high or you could use CCS medium. It depends on which one you want to do. You might want to do um, medium so you can have a little more control over the current and so forth. Next, the battery voltage lies between 12.6 and 13.6. What this is going to give me all right, this is going to give me a digital out input from TL431A of high or 1, but TL431B is still going to be low. So I'm going to turn off the red LED. I'm going to define this now as a medium charge rate. 
this could be I'll turn on the yellow LED that tells me that it's still charging turn off the green LED and delay another half second then I'm going to define the integer temp variable as CCS medium or I could elect to do CCS low to go ahead and charge it up more slowly depends on what you want to do medium or low it is up to you now we're going to come to our third if statement where the voltage into the two comparator circuits is 13.6 volts or higher TL431A is going to be high or 1 and TL431B is also going to be a high or a 1 this is the fully charged point red LED low yellow LED low now I'm going to turn on the hot green LED high it's going to be charged delay a half second then I'm going to load the variable temp with CCS off that's zero this will turn off the uh, constant current circuit totally once we leave the three if statements we have an analog write PWM out with temp so if it was the first condition it would be 255 or 144 second condition it would be uh, 144 or 44 or our third condition would be uh, of course off or zero and here's our I use the serial port to read the I use the serial commands to in order to read the PWM value which is how I derive those numbers to begin with PWM value equals and I adjusted this with a um, potentiometer in another circuit but this tells me what I need to know here PWM value equals temp and I'm going to delay five seconds before each sweep that's the whole that is the entire program and so I hope you have some fun with this we'll be doing a lot more of these applications in the coming weeks Thanks for listening and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.